What is up? It's your boy X Priest, and we are back again. What up, fellas? Yo, what is going on? It is Broke Gamer, and uh, just hanging out over here in this heat. I think we got out of it, but we're still not out of it. And yeah, so yeah. I don't, I don't think we're out of it completely. Uh, no, this is the is coming back, coming from the gaming house. So, okay, go ahead, go at these. You got <laughs> you okay there? What what happened? It's like so, my. Um, Hold up real quick here. Let me let me fix this. Uh, we technical have a, difficulties. Uh, technical difficulties. Just bear with us. It's all good. Imagine that there's one of those multicolored bar things on the, the screen right now. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Back whenever the TV would break down. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so there we go. I was I was wondering what was going. I was hearing myself in the background. I had the the monitoring up from Garage Man in the background. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I was hearing myself back. But no, yeah, no, this is the itch coming from the gaming pen now. So I definitely don't think we're out of the heat yet. Um, I think we're getting that like little break, a little, you know, a little one, two, like, yeah, it's windy. And like we, we got we got cooked pretty bad last week. We hit 104. I mean, it's 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 going around. Uh, all those people in Europe are melting as well, too. You heard about, you know, the heat wave over there. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Out of control. But yeah, but um, you know what? It's summer. Oh, so yeah. No, what that's... do you expect? Go ahead, bro. Oh, you know, just uh, just saying, it's summer. What do you expect? It's it's so freaking hot. Uh, like, it's it's breaking records how hot it is right now. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know what, summer's always hot. But you know what else? Uh, we're not taking care of the planet. So you know what? Do your part. Oh, here we go. Global warming. It's real. Fellas. That's right. I mean, folks no, that's just deepest. a that's a misnomer. It's it's a climate change now. I mean, we had some pretty bad stuff happening over the winter too. Yeah, no, for sure, definitely. Um, so since it's summer, since it's hot, we're going to get into, uh, right off the bat, you know, cause again, summer is not that much going on. You know what the fellows are up to. They're doing their thing. They got their swag going on. I got my swag going on. Soul is incognito. He'll be back sometime soon, but, um, we want to get into, uh, what are you playing in the summer and what are the best summer releases that have been out there, you know, in the past or whatever, whether we know whether we go uh, back five years or a decade or a couple years is fine. But, you know, just uh, talk about some summer releases, um, you know, guys, uh, you know, because I, I was uh, watching something. They were talking about, you know, summer releases and movies that came out that were phenomenal. And it had me thinking about what are the games that came out at summertime? Because summertime is where you usually release a title that you're not sure on how it's going to do. And so, therefore, you throw it out there when there's not much going on, people aren't buying, and there's not major releases generally around, you know, the time. So, I thought we'd go ahead and do something on that. Cool. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Well, um, I'll I'll start it off. Um, As far as when I think of uh, summer games and blockbuster games, they're far and few between that are actually released. Um, I was playing Young Bloods, a little bit of that, and didn't like it at all. I mean, it was pretty trash, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Pretty trash, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad, dude. And I was like, did they really just release this because they want one Bethesda one to get it out and get it done with? Or two, was it just something for the summer, you know, because it wasn't a lot, um, you know, of um, build up for the title, really. There was a couple of trailers out there on YouTube and all that stuff, but nothing real, ma- really major, um, you know, for the for the gaming build up. And, you know, the game itself, single player is 30 bucks, 29 bucks. And then if you buy the deluxe edition, you can uh but get it for 39 and then also you can have a friend play it for free so you can buddy up because it is a buddy up type title um to where you can uh play it cooperatively or you can have the p you know the play along with the the uh, npc um you know which is the other the other sister or whatever in that whole saga of wolfenstein but um but yeah it was pretty bad <laughs> and so it had me thinking like man what are some good titles that came out but um i can name one just right off the top um, well, a, a couple actually, but we'll go with Uncharted in 2017, August or whatever, you know, it's still summertime, but that was, uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. That to me was a, was, uh, you know, off of the, you know, a flip off the end Uncharted series, whatever first, uh, female antagonist. Um, it was pretty good. I, I liked it. I thought it was actually really good. And, um, you know, that, that was a good title to, to come out or whatever. To me that, that, that was a a borderline triple a title to me um one you know it's by naughty dog and two just the uh 
you know, the title itself, whatever, it was freaking epic the, from the visuals, um, you know, to the, all the places they actually went and stuff, whatever. It's, pre- it's pretty good. What do you guys uh, think about that? Did you guys ever play Uncharted? I don't know, bro, because you're a Sony hater, so it's kind of... Yeah, you, you can't put me in that in that boat. I haven't played any of the Uncharted games. I've watched a few gameplay videos, Dang. and it looks really cool. I mean, it's Indiana Jones. It's uh, Tomb Raider, <laughs> but, you know... Yeah, but it's pretty good. I mean, a lot of people have bitten off of the style, you know, whether it's the look, whether it's the um, the animations in the game as far as the climbing, you know, uh, features that they have. But a lot of it, um, a, a lot of people have taken from. So, I mean, it was a groundbreaking title, groundbreaking title that, you know, moved a lot of games along or whatever. So I, I think uh, it's uh, it, it'll go down in history or whatever as far as um, one of the first Tomb Raider style to really get people and get other developers um you know um taking uh, little pieces and stuff whatever off of that for their games you know the tomb raider reset i mean has a lot to do with that yeah you know? no uncharted the uncharted series is fantastic i actually haven't played the lost legs yet oh okay now that, now that i think about it but i, I played every one uh, one through four aside from that and yeah no i, I love the series I, I definitely love it now, now that you say that actually i might pick the lost legacy up and play it yeah i have it if you want to borrow it you can either do that or i mean because it's it's a really great title i mean the, the the graphics are phenomenal and the um animations the characters uh interaction dialogue is great yeah no i'm definitely in, um yeah no i should not think about it I, I can't believe i skipped that yeah no i'm definitely that's that's a good summer title for sure for sure nice little summer blockbuster like game right there yeah okay what do you have bro i know you're gonna have something off the beaten path well, I mean, we don't really talk too much about the Switch except for how much the actual system itself sucks. But uh, the Switch had a, a pretty bomb release uh, in 2017 as well since we're on that year, mm-hmm. which was Splatoon 2. Did you, uh, did you guys know that actually came out in July in 2017? Yep. Yeah, so that game uh, is one of the biggest games for the Switch. I mean, it's, it's, it's still a top game for it, highly rated, um, really the only arena shooter that has done well on the Nintendo platform. So... You know, uh, shout out to Splatoon 2. It's it's just a, a classic game. It didn't even, like, uh, lose any fans from the first one. It just kind of kept carrying through. Oh, yeah. I mean, that game was pretty big because, um, you know, um, that's some of my friends' uh, first title that they bought was that, you know, for, for their uh, kid. Then they end up, well, let me play. And, you know. Yeah, like grown you know, folks be playing yeah, that game, man. For sure. Yep. Yeah, this was, I haven't actually played any of the Splatoons. We need to try those out. I'm pretty sure the demo is still up um, for it if you want to check it out. Which is funny because like I never play demos anymore. I think I used to play demos before when I was like super into getting games but couldn't afford them. But now I'm like, I've done enough research. I'm either going to get it or not. Well, no, I, not- I still try to test out demos, homie. Try to save me 60 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> They don't really release demos anymore. That's kind of the problem. They, well, they just, it depends. Uh, it well, the demos are now betas. They, let, let's reiterate that uh, they're they're betas, they're alphas, they're they're that type of stuff, whatever. So, um, you know, it's uh, but there's a couple out there that are actually you know demo demos, but um, but yeah, they're more betas, um, alphas. You know, come try it out. You know, we're testing our servers or we're testing this, or testing that. You know. Yeah, no, that, that's true, actually. You definitely see more, and on that note, you see more multiplayer betas. It seems more than anything. Um, but yeah, no, the Splatoon. That's a good choice. That's that's definitely a good little summer pick up and play game for sure, for sure. Well, um, you saying that about the uh, the the beta stuff, it just reminds me of what we're dealing with right now with Gears of War, uh, since they're doing the tech test for all of the multiplayer, which makes sense because I mean that's the biggest part. They need to make sure the servers can handle that mess. Yeah, uh, it was the same thing with Anthem as well too. Yeah, I wish I would have saw the forest for the tree, but you know, off it, off topic. We all like, we like, all fell for it, dude. But even I, on, I've been, as I've been as playing. I am, I, I thought it was going to be a good one. I've been back in an anthem. I'm not going to give up my anthem. I, I I learned my lesson on doing that stuff, whatever. Until they close the servers, I got to get my money's worth. But I've been playing, and uh, I, I'm lacking a little bit of what they're doing. But they have a long way to go, and and it's so funny. I don't see how they're going to get there. But that's it with that. Let's move on. <laughs> these what do you have for the sum, for summer games oh so for summer games i actually have a brand new one that i was i've been playing a little bit of okay. um and this one's definitely off the beaten path a little bit but it's on game pass as well too for everybody listening who wants to go give it a yeah, quick yeah. try Yee. um blazing chrome have mm. you guys ever have you seen I any saw it. i saw it on game pass and um i haven't picked it up yet but it, it's it looked interesting because you can't really see the trailer right off the bat you actually have to go into the game 
No, so it, it's 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 funky. So basically, what yeah. it is, it's like um, anybody ever play Contras of the day? Oh yeah, oh, so yeah, like a definitely. side scooter or side scroller shoot 'em up. Yeah, but a hardcore metal slug type thing. That's okay, bas- okay. basically what it is. So it's a side scroller shoot 'em up, and it's just hard as hell. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that, basically getting my ass kicked pretty consistently. But I've been having a lot of fun with it. And the nice thing about it is that it's co-op. Unfortunately, it is only couch co-op. Um, and my girlfriend is nowhere near the level to actually attempt to even look at that, <laughs> look at that game, let alone play it. Yeah, there's there, it's some games you can tell that if like uh, one of our girlfriends gets to look at them, they'll just start stressing out because of just how visually intense it is. Yeah, she was she would just get mad looking at it. So that's yeah. not going to that's <laughs> not going like, to happen. You want me to do what? <laughs> OK, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so but no, yeah, it's on Game Pass. Um, so we'll quick pick up. It's on PC and Xbox. I've been playing the Xbox version. Um, it's fantastic. It's really good. If you're a fan of old school Contra like games, you guys would love Brave Blazing Chrome. Okay, yeah, there's a few of them on there uh, in that category, kind of scroller types. Yeah, and that one just came out, I think, last week or two weeks ago. I'm not quite yeah, sure that's what I, what I like is every week can check in, and there's usually a game or two there that wasn't there before. Yeah, so it, it's um, it's great. Yeah, I've been enjoying that. I haven't played too much in it, but the the couple levels that I have played in are really good. Cool, cool. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit you guys with with another one. Um, Batman Return to Arkham. That came out July 26th of 2016, but, you know, a fantastic game for the summer. And uh, that was a, a, you know, Arkham was was good. I I think that came in and pretty much, uh, you know, just nailed down what they were doing and um, the engine and just what they were capable to do. Um, as a developer to put that title out and um, it was a sleeper I want to say it was a sleeper I know people were waiting on it but again games you know blockbuster titles don't aren't really released in the summer um, I nope. think that was a pretty big one I think the summer's a good time to catch up on titles that you've been meaning to play yeah for sure <laughs> because yeah. once the fall hits it's it's party time yeah exactly and that's kind of where I'm at too like trying smaller titles that I normally wouldn't try otherwise um, replaying old games, kind of going through the Steam library, um, finding other stuff. Like right now, actually, one of the things I'm, I just started redownloading again was, um, and this is for the for all my weebs out there. This is going to be a hardcore, um, so a visual novel. It's called mm-hmm. World and Economica. And I've uh, never heard of that. <laughs> it's from the writer of Spice and Wolf. Oh, okay. And, and it's a uh, really good. It's a really good little game. Um, it's really cheap on Steam. It's only on PC. But a lot of visual novels haven't come to consoles yet. There, yeah. More of them are coming to Switch. And big ones like Stein's Game, things like that. But um, what's the gameplay yeah. and the layout like? So yeah, it's like you're reading a book. Essentially. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So it goes from like like still to still, and then you get to like make options in it, right? Yep. Like make kind it. of like a choose your own adventure. Oh, okay. Exactly. Make your own decisions. See how the story plays out because of that. Um, this one actually doesn't give you too much agency in terms of the characters and choosing the story like that. It's really just more of like a, a reading a book, to be completely honest on this one. But oh, it's okay. a very good book, um, and that's it's cheap. I think it's only like five bucks on Steam. Oh, that's cool. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely cool. Um, if you're into weeby shit like that, um, it's definitely worth a pickup. Yeah. I'm well, really, um, since the- we're we're on the, uh, the, the weeb train real quick, one of the ones on my list, because I have about four games that I wanted to talk about, um, it's uh, the Doki Doki Literature Club. Literature Club. I don't know if it's but that one has a massive following on Reddit. Massive. Uh, it's actually one of the the highest rated uh, light novels that's on on Reddit right now. I I've, um, I've read that shit. Okay. I won't say anymore. I will not say anymore. <laughs> That so, you know, uh, I won't say any more either, but just uh, go and find yourself the highest rated novel that's on uh, on Steam. It's a PC game as well, too. Um, I thought I should mention it uh, since you did mention that we could do that. Uh, oh, yeah. Thiege. Yeah, it's um, it's it's yeah. Doki Doki Literature Club, just to pick it back off. It's a uh, uh, it's zany. If you're in the mood for a kind of a mind fuck, go ahead and read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Is I I like Dang. things that mess with your brain, and that's one of them. Did, yeah. M, did M Night make this game? He damn near the, the Japanese version. <laughs> damn of near, actually, yeah. damn near. Uh, but what it's was actually it? not um, by a Japanese team. It's it's, it's by an American team, I believe. Really, I thought it was a Japanese team. Shows how oh, much no, no. to that one. Yeah, it's it's I believe it's either Canadian or American. I, forget, I get the exact um, uh, Savato team, Savato something like that. Um, mm just very inspired by vision novels and made one and 
got really popular. Okay. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good, and it's free if I remember correctly. Mm, that's always uh, yeah. good. That's yeah, good. so the even better, it's a true to broke name. He came with the best, uh, best recommendation. True, Cheap true to as brand. Free. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Let's um, put another one since uh, you have. All right, so yeah, let uh, I mainly wanted to focus on indie titles. I know yeah. that I mentioned Splatoon, and I did mention uh, Doki Doki, and I mean to an extent, it is an indie title, but um games that you don't have to spend reading too much uh more actual like you know puzzle platformers and stuff like that are, are a big passion of mine yeah and one of the ones that i found on game pass is actually called fez i don't know if you guys uh looked into fez at all when it came out okay. yeah i played a lot of fez i hate that damn game. i mean i like it <laughs> but it frustrated me to no end it's yeah yeah it's a very frustrating game but that's it, it has all of the key points of, a, of an indie game that i think anybody should try it has quirky characters it has really cool chip tune you know like 8-bit kind of style music um and it has a a puzzle aspect that will frustrate you to no end because the the gimmick to this game what makes fez interesting is that some sort of weird interdimensional being shows up and bestows a fez on your head that gives you the ability to spin your world on its axis so okay. whereas you used to live in a flat 2d world now you can spin the world around and it changes the way that your platform works. So, you know, and if you're also, what, think is of like, what is this? A play on play on Pez? Is that what this no, is? No, no, no. It's just that's Fez is the name of that little red hat that you that that I think like Shriners wear and it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. cultural thing from like the Middle East. Um, but yeah, yeah, he gets the hat, the hat gives him the power, and the, the like I said, the gimmick is you could be standing in one place and then you could be like, All right, well that tree is over there and I can jump on that tree, but it's in the background. It's part yeah. of the background. How about I spin the world to the right, completely rotate it, uh, and it, and suddenly the tree changes position, so now it's in the foreground, and now you can climb on that tree. And then I do it one more time, and now I can see behind the, the house that I was standing on, and the back of that house is a door that I didn't see before. And so it starts to add weird spinning elements where you're turning around. So think of it like looking at a, uh, um, like a Rubik's Cube, and each time that you spin the world, you look at a different color or face of the Rubik's Cube. Yeah, it becomes And so you're constantly spinning your world around. Exactly, yeah. It becomes, the 2D world becomes three-dimensional. And I think, like, one of the cooler things that I had was I was in, like, the spooky dimension area, mm -hmm. and there was, like, it was raining, and there are ghosts, and there's, like, lightning storms and stuff, and it wanted me to get to the top of this tower, and I'm like, how the hell does it want me to do that? And then I noticed that it's, like, raining, and some of the rain would randomly stop midair and then whenever a lightning bolt would strike you could see the outline of a clear block and so you had to use you had to time the lightning bolts to figure out where your next move was while spinning the world around That's and so cool. really cool like mechanic that they threw in there and so i haven't finished the game but i highly recommend it definitely gonna put a lot of time and frustration into this one but kind of in like the good way that puzzle platformers will do that to you yeah i'm surprised this is not on nintendo switch uh yeah, it should be. I think it is. Is it? Usually. Yeah. No, I think it's it's before that. It's kind of like how there's that wave of indie games before the the Nintendo became an indie thing. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's it's not. Yeah, it's a, it's a 2012 title, so definitely it wasn't there. Yeah, yeah Fez is really. I, I played quite a bit of Fez till I hit the point where I'm like, I think I'm just stupid, so I can't play this. Game <laughs> right. Anymore. It does. It makes you feel dumb, but I mean, the when you beat one of the levels, you feel pretty good. You just have yeah. to go back all the way to, to, to the like beginning of a point because you missed one little uh, block. One little piece. cryptic thing that you yeah. should. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can get pretty frustrating. So I, I do take breaks. That's why I'm taking my time with it. But that's that's one of the ones on my list. Yeah, um, it, it might be on one, Xbox Live Arcade um, moved yeah, over. Yeah, for sure. It it's, it's on, on Game Pass as yeah. well, too. That's that's actually how I got it. It was a Game Pass title. But you can get it on Steam and you can get it on, on Xbox yeah. uh, and PC. Um, the next one after that is called Pony Island. So I saw this one on a list of indie games to check out. And I was like, all right, what's this game about? And so it, it, essentially, it looks like a side-scroller shooter where you're a pony for like two seconds. And then after that, the game breaks loose and the story opens up. And it turns out that the game that you're in is possessed by the devil. <laughs> and you have to do your best to break out of the game and navigate the code with the the directions of like a dead player who was playing the game previously and died. Uh, and so like you'll be doing stuff like scrolling through and then suddenly the game requires you to like mess with the code or to like like the the game over screen starts and like blood will start pouring from like the mouths of like these ponies and you have to like jump out of the way so that you won't drown. Somebody was it's, a, it's a very 
Yeah, it's a very intense game, uh, and there will be like much death that you will be going through. But it's it's a uh, it's one of those where it's just kind of like like high pressure, uh, quirky, got to think out of the box games. And so I I appreciate the uh, the that try for for a game. Okay, that's yeah. that's funny. Um, let's take a break real quick and uh, just uh, to hit the social up, and uh, we'll be back. You are listening to Ether Gamer Radio. Yo, it's Broke Gamer. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever else you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and hit us up at EtherGamerRadio at gmail.com. All right. Um, just to uh, keep it uh, console friendly, I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and throw out another title. Um, and that's uh, Middle Earth Shadow uh, of War. That came yes. out, you know, it was late August, whatever, still summer title. But um, but yeah, that game actually is funny because uh, it reminds me of Assassin's Creed. It's a, it's a huge title. I mean, there's a lot to do in this game. Um, a lot of people can't get into it, but some who do and stick with it or whatever, it, it, it flushes itself out. Um, the character, I know Soul was talking about it. Um, you're able to manipulate it more. Um, games like Assassin's Creed, um, the actual mechanics are there off the bat. But um, some of the different swords and different weapons you choose and abilities of those weapons or whatever, those are locked behind, um, you know, progression walls on Assassin's Creed. But on uh, Shadow of War, the actual mechanics of the character, you have to actually upgrade over time. But uh, it's a great game. And it's like I said, it's huge as hell. Um, And uh, that was a good, you know, summer title. Yeah, the, I played the first one, um, not Shadow of War. But what was the one before that? It was Shadow just, of Mordor. Yeah, Shadow, Shadow of, of Mordor. Mordor. Yeah, because you were essentially trapped in Mordor. You couldn't leave. Yeah, and and it was fantastic. You know, I really liked the oh, nemesis yeah. the nemesis system. Um, I heard they expanded it yes. in Shadow of War. Mm-hmm. Um, it's real and good. actually, that's that's another good blockbuster to go back and try. See, this is this is why summer is so great because now I'm thinking like, okay, there's a lot of good games that I actually need to go back and revisit now. And that's while on we're Game not, Pass. That is Game Pass. Actually, that yes, isn't yes. Game Pass. Huh? We are we are leaning on Game Pass pretty heavily. <laughs> yes, but that's it's because you get what you pay for. I'll tell you exactly. what. Exactly. Um, Unlike yeah. Google Stadia, but that's but God bless Game Pass uh, and Google Stadia. I'm not sure it, it knows what it needs wants to be yet, but because I, I the, the more I hear about it, the less I want it. And I didn't even really want it that much. Oh, you didn't, you didn't want the 125 demo? You want you want to go? I was excited for the fact that we were going to get something like that powered by Google, but they just fucking dropped the ball on this one. You know what? And that's Google in a nutshell. Like, think of how many damn texting services Google has released and dropped the ball on, like Allo, Duo, texting. This is going to be another service that they release, and they can after six months of nobody using it. Okay, and we're going to get into it again. We're going to go off track (laughs) one more time with Google, only because I did send out something uh, in Messenger uh, with uh, between all of us. Uh, talking about how Google Stadia, you know, may or may not support titles after the publisher, you know, shuts it down or leaves or, you know, says, take me off your um, your, your your game uh, service. Um, but Google says, even though um, if the if the developer leaves, they will still you will still have access to that uh, title. Um, they won't take it away. It won't be purchasable uh, for other people, other people, but it will allow you to play it. They will not you know, take uh, your your um, rights to play that title since you already purchased it. But yeah. this is a slippery slope because developers are going to be like, whoa, do I want to put my game on your service? Because you, now you're telling me if I want to pull it, that I can actually cannot pull it from your service, even though people have paid whatever their price is, you know, for it or whatever, because a, a lot of streaming services actually went belly up. They didn't have that. It, basically, the service went down, so you couldn't play anything. You know, um, it wasn't to where you can play it on, you know, you already had it downloaded on your PC and so on and so forth or whatever. It was straight streaming or whatever, you know. Um, But uh, but yeah, so so Google doesn't really know what is going on. And to me, this stuff really should have been ironed out um, before they actually are ready to, um, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, come out with the service. I know they're just doing a demo, you know, uh, later this uh, this year. But um, to me, these type of things with developers should have been ironed out. 
Yeah, and, and that's actually not too far fetched from, from what currently happens in a lot of digital storefronts, like on Steam or Xbox Live. A lot of games that are stuck in like licensing hell, um, you know, they're pulled from sale. But if you have already bought them, you can re-download them from your library. Yeah, um, and it's kind of like that on Xbox Live or Steam or you know on any storefront where. And that kind of speaks to a larger point. I'm about to actually thump a little bit of a. Uh, um, physical media. There was an interesting point that I was I was watching a Twitch streamer, Maximilian dude, and he was going on a little bit of a tangent yesterday. Um, cool streamer, really good guy, really into big in the fighting community. Um, if you like watching fighting games, um, check him out. Oh but, yeah, he's, uh, he's great. I love his new intro, by the way. Oh, you, so you, yeah. So the priest knows who Maximilian is. Um, and he was he was going on his little rant yesterday about uh, about Evo coming up and basically Marvel. Of course, there's this rumored new Marvel um, versus Capcom announcement. Supposedly, there's one rumored every six months. Who knows what's going to actually happen? Um, Just but, give us a full roster list instead of like what ten characters on each side, like they did last time. That's exactly f- for the from a side point, but because that, that was the appeal. That was the appeal. Just going to put it out there. Exactly, that was the appeal. And number two is that you had so many characters, and exactly to that point to segue into it. Like number two was re-released. Everybody was so happy. Remember it was re-released for the 360. And PS3. Mm-hmm. And yeah, everybody. I remember that. We used to play a lot of that. So when 3 yeah. came out, that we kept the hope alive that they would release enough characters to make it interesting. But they decided to put more money into that 3D engine and less money into just keeping it a cool game. And now we have Infinite. Yeah, and exactly. So it kind of started like they completely lost what made number two good. But more to the point, you can't buy number two anymore. It's nowhere. Mm. You think about it, you literally can't buy it. Wow. Man. Yep. I, even though it was re-released in 2012 or not 2012, what was it, 2011 or something like that? I forget exactly what it was. Yeah, that was a previous generation. It wasn't ported over, and now Capcom doesn't have the Marvel license anymore. So no more Marvel vs. Capcom two. Oh, that's weird. Sad. Huh. And it was not released physically, so you just really can't even buy the re-release. The the the, the only way you can get it now is if you do the exact same thing you could have done before it was re-released and go get like an old Dreamcast copy. Yeah. Either that or get a ROM and play it on PC or play one of those um those like ripoffs that they created online like Mugen. Yeah. And and but that speaks to the point of like digital buying, like that's one of the inherent flaws of like digital storefronts is that if licensors decide they don't like it on there anymore, it will disappear. And if you give it one generation swap and it's not put on a platform that's kinda evergreen, yeah. It will disappear. True. Yep, it's true. That's why I'm into the disc. When when possible. <laughs> until they pry it out of my dead cold hand. But I, what was it? I've only moved in one direction with video games. It's very difficult for me to go back. Um, like I, I, I just, I'm not a nostalgia gamer. Once I've gotten it in the system, that's it. Uh, then after that, I just kind of keep moving forward, or I move sideways to something that's kind of similar, or you know, haven't tried. Yeah, I'm right there with you, broke. Um, there are certain games I will go back for. Um, like Asteroids, R-Type, you know, just certain those, yeah, those yeah, small but niche those games. Those have kind of like a, a weird specific niche, like early uh, video game, kind of like a, it's like a proto video game. Like yes. it was it was the video game before what we have now was a thing established. No, for sure. Um, but hey, people out there, like I've told you before, buy titles you love. Get them on sale come, uh, you know, Thanksgiving time, Christmas time you know, prime day time, get those games really cheap, or whatever, because one, they're going to be playable. All games on the, on the Sony system, the PS4, the PS5 playable Xbox X, Xbox, whatever it's going to be called Scarlet. Um, it's all going to be playable and it's going to be upgraded. Some of these titles will be upgraded automatically. Get them, love them, keep them. You're going to wish you had them to go back and play because you've been playing the Witcher. We all been playing the Witcher PC people. They love it. They've been playing it in the 4k, all that good stuff, but you're going to be able to you know play it you know with smoother frame rates and you know so on and so forth as as time goes on so that this is a good time to actually keep titles and go back and then play those titles because you can get them dirt cheap when they initially came out they were 60 dollars. some games now you can find for you know anywhere between 5 10 15 bucks broke style that's right get it just, on the down low i agree and i wish to to echo that point if Sony wants to win me over completely, all they have to say is that the PS5 is backwards compatible with, with one through five, one through five, you know, one oh, through they, four. No, dude, they've been singing that, uh, uh, singing that. Mark Cerny, um, you know, again, it's been put out by, you know, this person. Well, we don't know if, he, you know, how much information he actually knows. Is he an insider? Um, but Mark Cerny definitely said it's going to be backwards compatible. But I am definitely hearing one 
through five. And that would be amazing. So this is going to be very interesting. And uh, again, they're not going to Microsoft for those servers for nothing. Not just because, you know, they want to, you know, do their gaming, streaming service, whatever, too. No, they want to go back into their catalogs or whatever and make all this stuff, whatever, you know, feasible going in. So I, I think I think they and again, um, they're competing with uh, Microsoft. So why wouldn't you? That's true. I just, you know, the thing is the way some, like you just mentioned it, though, the way they're going to do it, they're not going to do it the way they used to do it. Like when you first bought the first fat PS3s and it had the PS2 hardware inside of it, where you could just put a disc in yeah. and play PS2 <laughs> games. Um, no, yeah. they're going to make you rebuy games like they did on the PS4 for that, that limited PS2 backwards compatibility. Yeah, that. that or they're going to create a retro library that you can only download from their website. Yeah, it's going to be something half-assed. Like, I mean, this is the cynic in me talking. I hope to be completely wrong because I would love for no, Sony I don't, to start. I don't really see putting my um, demo disc of Black Ice from the PlayStation 1 in the PlayStation 5 and expecting it Wouldn't to Wouldn't that play. be the sickest that thing, would be amazing like, that, would, if it that, would, that would be the sickest thing. Because I still I have buy. that disc. <laughs> I would that would be. revive the uh, the. PlayStation, um, what was it, retro gaming uh, market again? You wouldn't just have to buy the the console from them. You could, they could make a premium just selling old copies of games that are still in really good condition. Yeah, if, like you could take a black disc PlayStation game and put it in your PS5. That would be incredible. I'd buy two systems right out the gate for two Ooh, different rooms. Sony, are you listening? Sony, do you hear me? I would broke sell my, my buy Xbox. one. <laughs> you guys are speaking a bunch of nonsense over there. You'd have a lot of gaming to play. I'll tell you that. You have a lot of a lot of games to play with that. Kinda. Well, then it would become kind of like the people who only listen to music from certain eras. Like um, as of recently, I have I have seen the light, and I have these studio headphones, and I was talking to everybody about how the '70s was the best time for live recordings, um, just because it of was. how they layered the effects and how they 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 the recording techniques that they use. And I, I still stand exactly. by that. Uh, well, yeah. I do too. Yeah, it's 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 brilliant. Some of the stuff that they were doing, you can't really tell if you're just listening to it like uh, off of your phone on earbuds or whatever. Like if you use studio headphones, you can hear the random dude in the background who was playing the same note throughout the whole song. Yeah, and it's like, I'm sure that doesn't matter to most of you guys, but to somebody who's like deeply in love with music, that's just that's one more layer that matters when you can hear somebody click on their amp. No, oh, for sure. To Hendrix yet? What was that? Have you made it to Hendrix yet? <laughs> no, surprisingly, I actually haven't. Um, oh, most wow. of the stuff that I'm listening to is kind of like folk music where it uses a lot of acoustic like mandolins and banjos and like guitars and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it sounds really cool. Hendrix is, um, his stuff is for, for music of the time. It was like legions ahead of his time in terms of like production. Just in terms I'll have to, to give it a proper sit down because, yeah, that's the thing is that I've always kind of like orbited Hendrix, but I haven't done a deep dive. Oh, yeah, it's fun stuff. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. And I'm going to be covering stuff like that on Cold Black Radio. Hey, what's up? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's my, side, my side piece. Show. Yeah, I, I remember uh, you mentioning something like that. And now I'm seeing the socials pop up. So you guys got to go and follow that as well, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just going to be, you know, me, whatever random person talking about whatever. It is, just general shit. Uh, but yeah, that story for another day. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But uh, but yeah, no. Um, so that, yeah, bro, hit us with one more. Hit us with... Uh, Another. Um, All right. Um, I have mentioned this one before, but guys, please, please, please pick up Thimbleweed Park. It it falls in the same category. Is that a Snoop as, game? What was that? Is that a Snoop game? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Thimbleweed Park is a title that I brought up during uh, the episode that I did with Thiege. But I like I really want to reiterate how interesting of a game it is. Um, it's a it's a point and click adventure. It's a sci fi horror mystery. You are a detective and you have to figure out who killed uh, the most important person in this city and why this body's here and why. Like, there's a bunch of dead people and you get to play as one of the dead people as a ghost. Like, as far as I've made it in the story, you're like playing as the main detective and you're helping the main detective as the ghost. And it's just kind of really interesting um, where it just it's it's it encapsulates the 80s. Like, there's a part where you have to pretend to be a cool guy and you have to know the slang from the 80s. You have to know what TV shows were on and you have to know... That's cool. Uh, what was it? Like, the the music that mattered and all that stuff. So it's just kind of funny whenever that popped up. I had to remember all of that stuff um, adjacently because I wasn't even alive during that time. But I just remember, like, the echoes of it because I was born in the 90s. And I was like... 
All right, all right. Let's see. Uh, MTV was a thing back then. That's a reference that they they <laughs> let you make there. So let's make thing. an MTV reference. Dang. And so it's just it's it's kind of quirky how like fourth wall and tongue in cheek everything is. And it's a low pressure game. So like if you just don't feel like investing yourself in some arena game where you're going to be stressed out, just play that game. It it basically plays itself. All you have to do is just you know think about what works together. Like uh, I'll help you out with one of the puzzles. You have to remove the stamp from a letter. And a, a way I remember seeing is that somebody would use steam from a tea kettle to remove the stamp from a letter. Now, that's not the answer, but that's an adjacent answer. So if you can figure out how to do something like that, you'll get your stamp off that letter. <laughs> that's too funny. That's pretty yeah. cool, though. This is it's only a really PC. cool game. It's, it's, it's on Game Pass and Steam, so pick oh, okay, it up. Do yourself cool. a favor. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like I said, Steam, I mean, you have a, you have a roulette of games to, uh, to play and uh, check out and to dive into. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really good service. Again, I, you know, my only gripe about it is, it, you know, it's so funny because uh, my actual gold wore, wore out. I mean, um, it's, it's off, <laughs> you know, I, I, it's a, time is up and yep, um, I'm still going because off my dollar for however many months I have, I was like, oh, yeah. I still have service. I don't have to re-up right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was yeah. actually worried that when I was uh, when I was done with this last job, I was going to have to start paying uh, for it again because that was about the time when it happened, but it made the conversion, so it actually extended me until the end yeah. of October. Yeah. So I'm just so like, that is okay, interesting. Yeah, that I'll is, write it out. Along with this. And now if I had a PC to play those these titles, I would love it even more because you know, now I have a plethora of uh, yeah, you know games to play and another to play. 30% that you're not catching on the xbox yeah that's that's what i appreciate about the 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 pc to, to xbox uh bridge yeah yep 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 all right uh uh these you have any any more um i, I can help you with a, a fun one here so this one last one here it's actually gonna be a retro a little bit of a throwback okay um console it is a xbox title and one that i'm actually looking to get back going again just because i'll pick to it up and want to play it again um, it's a really obscure Xbox title. Came out way back in the way. Um, called Phantom Crash. Brooke might actually know what I. Mm. Me- remember, remember when you playing that one? Um, if I did, I don't remember it. So let me look it up on my phone real quick while you tell us about it to see what I can. So what it is is Phantom Crash. It's a mech game, and it's kind of set in like Neo Tokyo typeish environment where you have mechs and and it's oh. a coliseum shooter okay. based around mechs. Um, and you, you you play you're like this new recruit. Um, oh damn, this game. Okay. Yeah. You. Wow. Really... Okay, it's been a long time since damn, I played that one. I didn't even own time. it. I just remember playing it at other people's houses. Yeah, that's um. No, I, I think, think I, I, lent, I lent it to you like years uh, way way back when. Well, wow. I remember that you you slid me uh, an Xbox when you were done with it because your dad had gotten the 360, and that was how that was what started me in that generation of gaming. <laughs> so, so we can blame it on Thieg actually, if not you actually. Yeah, I, I think you can blame it on it's me. It's his fault why I ended up PS2. on the green team because before that, I owned a PlayStation and a GameCube. Dang, that's funny. Yes, but um, yeah, no, it's really fun. Really, kind of like arcadey, kind of like um, Sim. If you're like into like it's mech like animes mech and things like that. Kind of similar, but Mech Warrior is more like industrial. Like it's serious. Like this is more yeah, like Mech Warrior was kind of like like more American military type. Yeah, um, this is more. I'd this is more anime. Phantom, yeah, Phantom Crash was way more anime. Think like Metal Gear kind of status. Yeah, it looks yeah. Cool. I don't think I played that actually. What was that? I said I don't think I've actually played that. If I have, I don't remember. A lot of people didn't. It wasn't a very huge title. I picked it up. Shoot, I think I picked it up for like five bucks when it was brand new back in the day. Oh, uh, and, and it was like one of those like super hidden gems of the Xbox days. Well, I, what I liked about it was that it was it was working on a um, on an idea that was pretty established. Like during that era, Mech Warrior games were were king, PC and and Xbox and true. um and uh, PlayStation as well too. Um, so it's just kind of cool that, that they tried for something. It was, it was kind of out of a different meta, um, because they were approaching it from kind of a Japanese anime kind of angle. And I think that it, it, it gave it something else because there's a lot of those, um, those Japanese mech animes, which I'm not a super huge fan of. Like it takes me a while to get into those cause they're like so dry and serious yeah. and it usually involves a lot of like character death and stuff. But, um, you know, for a game, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Upgrading the mechs, you know, fighting out the battles. It was a great game. I, I'm trying to get it up going here in an emulator, um, see how that works. Original Xbox emulation is a little wonky right now, but uh, it's we'll not on the it store. It's not on. Um, it's not a, a an enhanced title. 
I think no. Cool. No, I this, this one didn't make it past that generation. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, nobody's playing this. Yeah, I don't think they're going to dedicate any man path. That'll be, if that ever gets makes it, it'll be because they were working on some other game and that just happened to make it work. <laughs> That's too funny. I'm looking at the reviews here and what's interesting is, is that it actually got like pretty favorable reviews for, for it being like a no-name game. It, it did well. It got like a 75%, 4 out of 5 so yeah, for for a title back then, that's just interesting. It, yeah, and it had no buzz, but it was so great. I loved it. I remember when I got it, I was like, "This is so crazy." Well, it was kind of like uh, like Jet Grind Radio or a Jet Set Radio Future. Those titles were so crazy, weird, and cool, but like nobody knew about them unless like you got them for free when you bought the Xbox and then ignored it. Pretty much. Yep. All right. Well, um, that is it for our summer recap, along with some uh, gaming news thrown in. <laughs> Every now and then, yeah, it's but, forced uh, gaming news. Exactly. <laughs> it forced its way into the door. We were on vacation, and the game was like, "Not yet." <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, uh, fellas, is that it? That's it. That's it. We're out. Peace. Later. Later. Thanks for listening. For more information on the show, go to our website, EtherGamerRadio.com. You can always catch us on our Facebook fan page. You can hit us up on Twitter or our hosting site, Podbean. Hit us up on iTunes and drop us a review. It helps get the word out to other gamers, so spread the love. As always, we would love to hear from you. Hit us up on Eat the Gamer Radio Hotline, 916-877-5745. Until next time, stay gaming. Ether Gamer Radio.